touching the 25,000 volt overhead electric cable. He must have received a shock. Uh, he fell down below about 30 feet onto the track and unfortunately at that time a passenger train came by and actually hit him. The second boy alerted a passing police car. Trains were suspended while the emergency services attended the scene. The teenager suffered multiple injuries, including the loss of an arm and a leg. He was taken to nearby Heartlands Hospital, where he underwent major surgery, but died earlier this morning. The friend who was with him at the time of the accident was unhurt. British Transport Police have begun an investigation. Liz Munro, Midlands Today, Neachels in Birmingham. The family of a man from Stoke-on-Trent who was found hanging in a cell say they're planning to sue the police. Today, an inquest jury returned a verdict of suicide. Kirk Murphy's mother and father have listened to more than a week of evidence about the circumstances of their son's death. 25-year-old Kirk Murphy was a heroin addict who was found hanging in a cell at Hanley Police Station in July last year after being arrested for robbery. He'd used his shoelaces. He died in the North Staffordshire Hospital two weeks later. The inquest jury had been told whilst Kirk Murphy was in custody, he'd asked to see a doctor, but the officer on duty had forgotten to pass on his request. The jury was also told it was Staffordshire Police policy to remove laces, ties and belts from prisoners, but this wasn't done. Also, the cell in which Mr Murphy had been placed had a faulty hatch with a bolt missing. Following the inquest verdict, Mr and Mrs Murphy left court intent on taking further legal action. I also think there should be cameras in each cell to protect, because there's that many lads going in there that are under the influence of drugs. Kirk Murphy's case has been referred to the Police Complaints Authority. Following this inquest verdict, it will now hold its own investigation. The coroner said he will be considering all the matters raised by the case and will be writing to Staffordshire's chief constable. Liz Copper, Midlands Today, Newcastle under Lyme. Five people who turned a former chicken farm near Wolverhampton into a cannabis factory have been jailed for a total of 14 years. Detectives seized more than a thousand cannabis plants after raiding Poplar's farm in Wheaton Aston. Stoke Crown Court heard the factory was capable of a turnover of £150,000 a year. And that's all from us tonight. The weather coming up with Isabel Lang. Good night. Hello there, good evening. Things are very slow to change across the British Isles in the next few days. And at the moment, well, we've got a front just to the west that's almost stationary now with high pressure again across the bulk of the British Isles. Now that means again another very cold night, a widespread frost, some icy patches and also some dense fog as well. Visibility down to 100 metres in some places. So some really tricky driving conditions through tonight and into tomorrow morning. Let's look at the temperatures then. Minus 2 to minus 5 across central and eastern parts of England and Wales. Minus 8 or minus 9 up in Scotland. That's about 16 Fahrenheit. Around some of these southern and western coasts, though, of England and Wales and up in towards Northern Ireland, temperatures above freezing here, rather more in the way of cloud and some patchy rain as well. And I think that will push across the Irish Sea during the night into some parts of southwest Scotland where it could turn a little bit sleety. Now, through Wednesday, then, we keep rather cloudy skies across the west. It'll be quite a weak front, so not much rain around, but there will be some patches of rain. That'll push further eastwards through the day into, say, parts of Cumbria and southwest Scotland. Still some snowiness, I think, over the hillier areas. For central and eastern Britain, though, of course, we've got that frosty and foggy start. Through the day, though, I think some weak sunshine coming through, but as we had today, the fog could linger all day in some places, and there it'll be really cold and dank. Where the fog lifts, though, we're in the week. Sunshine temperatures getting up to around 6 to 8 Celsius. Now, for the rest of this week, we'll start to see changes, but it really is going to be very slow. So across southeast Britain, still some problems with frost and fog. But on the western side of Britain during Thursday, we'll see fronts moving in. And eventually through Friday, yeah, those fronts are accompanied by much milder southwest winds. So we'll start to see that eventual change. For Thursday then, especially across central and eastern England, we start off frosty and foggy. Just a little bit of watery sunshine, I think, through the afternoon. Temperatures around 6 or 7. In the west, though, rain pushing in. That'll be preceded by a spell of sleet and snow for the hills. And then the real mild air arriving in the northwest by the end of the week. Still frosty, though, in the southeast. Bye-bye. Blue Mountain was a Native American Indian. He was born Cherokee. It's this woman's belief that she was married in a former life. He and I were husband and wife. Today, Blue Mountain is able to talk through the living. So, 
the little words can cross puns together. Every man investigates spiritualism. Sunday at 10:30 on BBC One. There are some very important people dropping into BBC One on Thursday night. What will you do, Jean? Just Bob. I can sing as long as you like. Well, no, you can. I was at your swimwear party. And when they think it's all over, there'll be the usual array of top sports stars being treated with the respect they deserve. I knew we could take this programme up market. After that, I'll be my usual polite self to all the big names on my show. But then, I'm all talk. Thursday Night Entertainment. Thursday from 9.30 on BBC One. Oh, yes! With the exotic backdrop of Malaysia, Irish family band The Cause are in concert in Kuala Lumpur at quarter to midnight. The Tuesday night film first on BBC One starring Harrison Ford and Willem Dafoe. In the wake of murder, a mission from the president means there is clear and present danger. <laughs>